What is up, everybody? Welcome to the feast. What episode are we on here? Episode 72, the show where you submit replays and we cast them. I am Deltius. How's it going, guys? Good to see everybody. Hmm. So, not a whole lot to say. I think we're gonna hop into it relatively quickly here. Um, Mr. P. Boop would start the betting. I, I got the. I figured out how to let everybody's favorite mod uh, run the uh, run the contest. So, kind of test running test running it tonight, man. Let's see how it works. Oh, oh, is he not there? Want me to start already? Yeah, open up the bettings. Um, so yeah, I got uh, I got the currency started last show. If you guys uh, missed that one, uh, so you could type explanation mark wolf coins uh, to see how much currency you have, and then we'll open up a very quick betting round before every replay. Boom, there it is. No announcements? Yeah, not really. Um, a gentleman's got a tournament that he's organizing. Um, that is pretty awesome. It's like a duelist style thing where a few um, contestants, if you will, you know, run through the gambit of a whole bunch of different players. I'll talk a little bit more about it in a little while, though. Let's hop into match number one. Boom. Okay, starting in the bottom, we've got Vincent and his opponent to the right, Bratmo. Yeah, I need to. I need to do some updates to the channel, man. Hashtag weekend goals. I need to get a little section under there with, uh, you know, the little art overheads um, for my bot commands. Uh, I need to get the links to the gentleman's event that he's been organizing. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, it's going to be spread out. It's not going to be a traditional, like, get everybody together at once style tournament, but, it, you know, kind of like a tooth and tail league style thing. Uh, where the games are played over over several days, if not weeks, um, and then we'll cast you know batches of them as replays. And I think I'm going to be casting the first uh, first portion of it, and then Gabini and Jet Erickson are, are going to be casting after that. So it's going to be pretty cool, man. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, let me make sure I am not lagging as this game builds up so far so good I think last time I was just lagging because my OBS was out of date so we got some classic Vincent first Bratmo action nothing looks super well as I say that Vincent's deck has no tier one at all have we this looks I don't think we've seen this one per se have we but I think we've seen a game uh, where one of the players was was doing something similar here We see so many Fincents for Spratmos, man. It's hard for me to recall all of them. So Bratmo opening up with some Lizards here. Uh, we're going to try to get uh, maybe some early game aggression done. I actually like opening up like this. Um, it, it's not so great for the spawn that, that Fincent has here. Um, if you're Bratmo, because it's going to be more difficult to come in and find angles to, to get some damage done with those Lizards. But six Lizards in the early game will take down a pig pretty quickly. Um, they fare fairly well against most tier 2. Man, this game is giving me serious deja vu. I don't think we've seen this game. No, I don't think we've seen this game, but I th think we've seen something similar out of these players. Which wouldn't surprise me, because they're always running crazy decks, so... Uh, Bratmo's not going to put on any aggression. Yeah, I think last time we saw this, one of the players went for like a 5 farm tier 2, if I recall correctly. Uh, Bratmo going to go ahead and take an expansion. Vincent takes one around the same time. And the game's gonna gear up from here. So, so far nothing crazy. You know, Vincent hasn't really been penalized for the lack of tier one yet. Um, but we'll see how that goes as the game progresses. Now, getting up some chameleons uh, can help, kind of be your buffer unit on the front lines. Uh, so that will kind of take the place of tier one. I think this works better when you have things like owls and moles and, and stuff like that in your deck, to because you need some some kind of grunt unit on the front uh, to soak up damage. You know. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Miss Clicker? Always a pleasure to see you, man. Okay, so thus far, no engagements here. Vincent is just building up this huge tier 2 army, and Bratmo's definitely got to know what's up, man. He's got to know Vincent does not have tier 1 in his deck. Vincent is going to get the scout off on the second base. Very nice. Uh, Bratmo has not yet scouted the second base <clears throat> Excuse me, of, of Vincent, so 
he might be thinking in this game that his economy is a little bit ahead where in reality it's kind of matched Bremo floating a little bit of money there so he's gonna throw that down uh, in the form of a wolf and just continue to macro, macro up from here so over in Camp Vincent, not a whole lot's going on, man. He's just getting a little bit of everything as far as this tier 2 goes. And the snakes actually getting in range up here is going to be uh, really, really good for Vincent. I'm pretty sure this Grismal is about to go down, right? But at the same time, Bratmo's moving out on the map. Oh, but he burrows home. I was going to say, maybe he has the opportunity to counterattack with the lizards over there. This Grismal is definitely uh, going to go down. Nice uh, abuse of the map, abuse of the terrain there from Vincent. You know, <laughs> there's really not... A lot Bratmo could do about that one. That's a pretty risky second base too. Uh, Bratmo could have taken this, you know, more of a pocket base over here with all the water around it, and save this third base for later. But he wanted to take that earlier on, just kind of as an investment in the future, right? So that uh, third base would be later uh, easier to take. All right, but the wolf's almost here, man. That's gonna add a lot of power. Uh, to Bratmo's army, but Vincent, you know, off the back of getting some damage done, is starting to move out on the map with his tier two only army. Positioning is going to be very important here, but I don't know, man. Does Bratmo just run over this? Like, he's got a lot, a lot of tier one. Yeah, you want to get those chameleons up front, want to try to lay down some good skunk gas here, harass with these ferrets. All right, the engagement's going in. Vincent trying to prioritize keeping the ferrets alive. One of them goes down. Chameleons have dropped. No, one of the chameleons... No, I guess it's it's remaking. Chameleons are definitely dead here. And... Oh, it's close. Looks like Vincent's starting to bust through. This this wolf really can't go down here. Did Bramos commander die? No, there it is. It gets very, very low, but it stays alive, trying to buy some time to rally up some Tier 1 units. But Vincent has so much momentum here, the army of Bratmo really can't get together and form a large enough, you know, clump of units to, to deal with this tempo. The wolf's gonna go down. Oh, 3 HP on the wolf. Wolf stays alive for now, but it's got nothing to support here. Ooh, Bratmo. Bratmo's starting to clean this up, but he's losing his pigs with the skunk gas eventually. Keeps the wolf alive. And Bratmo does hold, but he's taking a lot of damage. And Vincent has a nice economy behind this. If economies were even, maybe I'd make the case that Bratmo could come back here, but we'll see. I mean, don't underestimate the wolf buff, man. Bratmo's kind of got to try to win this game right here, right now. And he never scouted that expansion from Vincent, so he thinks Vincent's broke, but Vincent's got another base cooking, but tier 2 units are so expensive and they, and they take so long to make. Bratmo's starting to push through here. This this wolf is getting too much poison on it, however. Yeah, even with the healing there, it's gonna fall. <laughs> oh man, this game is so scrappy. Oh my god. This is great for Vincent, man. Vincent's got the economy. He's got to sell up a couple of these tier two warrens, I feel like. He's got too many things blocked uh, from production here. So he needs to kind of downsize a little bit and try to build whatever he can to stay in this game. All right, let's see it, man. Vincent's getting aggressive. Starting to get some damage done with the snakes here. Needs to try to micro this chameleon and keep it alive as long as possible. The snake, though, is going to see to it that that chameleon falls. Snake's going down as well. I think Vincent's got it from here. The falcon's going to fall. But bramo has got nothing left. He's got no warrens. He's got no economy. And I'm fairly sure he's going to tap out here. Hey, what's up, Paco Watch? Good to see you, man. And thus ends match number one. Pretty cool back and forth uh, game there from from Finston and Bratmo. Okay, guys, we are gonna hop into match number two. I'm gonna give P Boop a second to get the betting going.
So what's going on, everybody? Good to see y'all. The gentleman hasn't announced a date for it yet, but he does have a tournament coming up. I'm a slacker on updating my channel. I actually have to do a lot to underneath my Twitch channel there um, and get that information. But here we go. The bets are up for Eris vs. Blue Coon. So let's hop into it. Match number two. All right, spawning in the bottom, we've got Eris. And his opponent up top, Blue Coon. All right, Eris rocking that Owl Fox, man. It's been proven to be a deadly combo if it can happen. You know, the idea with this deck is you have the flexibility to, to do a, a Fox Rush or even just a two base Fox, um, but you're trying to answer the issue of the, the Fox deck composition kind of falling off later on in the game. Uh, so it's cool to see, man. It is hard to fit two tier three in there. Uh, I think uh, the way that Iris is doing it makes a lot of sense. You know, dropping that defense slot essentially uh, to fit in that second tier three. Meanwhile, Blue Coon here just has a nice overall deck that looks like it'd be really fun to play with, man. I might have to give it a shot. I really like using uh, Lizards in the current meta. Um, I think they've been a little bit less popular recently because Toads are, are pretty pretty popular at the moment. Um, but I, I still feel like they, they do very well against most tier twos, and it's just fun running around trying to find pockets of damage. You know, snipe a warren here or a pig there with a, you know, a squad of six to nine lizards or something. I, I think that's a really fun way to play. Um, so Blue Coon looks like he's just opening up standard here. Uh, eight farm, maybe two tier one, maybe going into a tier two, and uh, Eris is going straight into a tier two. Tries to hide it from Blue Coon, but Blue Coon gets the scout off and uh, can resp respond accordingly. And I like this approach. He's going to just go a lot of lizards here and try to punish his opponent uh, for going directly into tier 2. Now, as far as Iris is concerned, he's kind of got things working for him and, and working against him here. The placement of these warrens is, is kind of risky. They're not you know, as safe as they could be around the farm. However, uh, a lot of players, and rightly so, make the argument, well, you know, if you've got high ground outside your base like this, sometimes it's better to... Uh, you know, be a little less safe with those opening warrens and, and start trying to claim that high ground. But with lizards here, man, he could, yeah, he can run around, he can attack this exposed flank. It's going to take a while for those units to get there. He can also run in and snipe those warrens and not have to deal with so many pick shots. So, nice little play there from Blue Coon. Uh, knocks out a couple pigs for, looks like, five lizards. <laughs> so. Needs to be careful though. I mean, that was decent damage, but not game ending damage. And Iris is moving out to claim this uh, Grismill. I like this play a lot. I think this makes sense. You know, up on here on the double high ground, if you can claim this area as Iris, uh, then you're essentially locking in that back base as well. Nice map presence though here from Blue Coon. Staying on top of his opponent, you know, constantly aware of what he's doing, and manages to get in and snipe that Grismill before Iris can really get set up. Now, the big. Thing that Blue Coon needs to identify here. Yeah, this is what I was mentioning earlier, where he could kind of just run in here and snipe these warrants. However, he might lose every single lizard here, as Iris has toads, and the lizards are boxed in. These toad connections are going to be amazing. All these lizards go down. Very nice trade there for Iris, but Iris just lost a lot of real estate, man, so he's looking to get aggressive here on the map. This is 100% the right move, in my opinion. You know, Blue Coon got some damage done, but he, he has a little bit less in army. However, Blue Coon has just been committing so much to tier one. By the time that Iris could really get his act together and get over there, you know, Blue Coon has just got more and more lizards, but this is risky, man. You can micro the lizards against the toads as you see Blue Coon trying to do there. You know, get that toad to explode maybe on the edge of the pack and just take out one or two lizards rather than getting a nice big con connection on everything, but it's hard to do. Um, You know, if it was me in this situation, I, I I don't typically go super hard on the straight lizard anyways, but I, w I would have teched two squirrel after identifying the toad. Um, but Blue Coon can still make this work, especially with chameleons in his deck. If he positions the chameleons forward of his army, tries to tank those uh, toad connections with the chameleons, uh, they'll leave his lizards nice and open to get some damage done. So both players have secured a second base at the moment. Iris is moving out. He wants to get something done here. Needs to be careful with these toads. It's really going to come down to the toad connections, but it uh, looks like they actually go off on the warren. That's what Blue Coon needed to get in here. Chameleons are pretty good against lizards, though. <clears throat> but Blue Coon's even got his own chameleons here and makes short work of Eris' army.
All right, Blue Coon, man. Again, like, he's got a nice pack of lizards together, but it's always risky against this amount of toads. Or even any toads at all. Like, this is three toads. What am I saying? This amount of toads, right? And I like this a lot from here. It's not over committing on the toads. Just having a couple there almost as a utility to the army. Now, Blue Coon can make this happen, happen with good chameleon positioning. Um, yeah, but this is really cool, man. Like... He's well aware of the toads, and he's staying on lizards here. He's, he's showing us, no, man, I can make this work, even if you've got toads. So let's see it. Blue Coon trying to find an angle to get in, but wants to be careful. Doesn't want to take some, some toad hits when he's not ready and lose this entire army. Ooh, sneaking around the back. Oh, he actually could get back out of there. Oh, my God. Those toad hits were very good. <clears throat> Don't destroy everything, but do some nice damage. Definitely trading up there uh, is Iris. I mean, look at the army value right there, man. So crazy. Yeah, that, I, I think that was definitely Blue Coon's fault. You know, he got a little bit too far out on the map with his lizards. He knows about the toads. He had a little escape route over here, but he might not have it scouted. Yeah. And, I mean, he kind of sees it, but you don't want to gamble your entire army, essentially, you know, on hoping that that spot right in the nine o'clock connects as it does all right economy's pretty even here man this game could still go either way uh i'm really kind of looking to see who throws down a tier three at the moment and and who and if if it is thrown down is it scouted and iris not thinking about going up in tech instead wanting to get a stronger economy grabbing that third base Blue Coon is just really hoping to find Iris' army out of position. Find somewhere where you can wiggle in with these lizards. Where the the, the cracks aren't sealed up tight and, and get something done. But it's a dangerous game, man. Finally getting some squirrels into this comp composition here is Blue Coon. And, you know, this is where it's kind of interesting, you know, that Iris is going up to six toads. Like, if Blue Coon teched out of these lizards and went down to three lizards, and then he could try to trade the three lizards into the six toads and, and, and do well for himself that way, but... All right, third bases for both players here. We're almost eight minutes into the game. It's so weird. Like, for the longest time, we didn't have streamer mode, so I had the the match timer um, covered up because it would kind of spoil the, the length of the game, right? So I'd have to, like, constantly update everybody on the time. So it just started becoming part of my, my casting, you know, routine, if you will, where every few minutes I'd be like, all right, we're at the 4.30 mark, you know. Every now and then it still slips in. Habit. All right, let's see it. Owl going down here for Iris. Makes makes sense in this phase of the game, I think. Especially with all the lizards there. Lizards do very well against the uh, the fox. He's seen chameleons as well. You know, typically if you're going to get the fox, you'd like to get it a little bit earlier. Uh, the owl makes sense as a nice late game unit. But Blue Coon, man, is going up to a ton of chameleons here. Hasn't committed to a tier 3 yet. He's going to go a little less crazy on the chameleons. Try to get some economy going instead. But he's not aware of the owl. Which is important, which you should kind of be expecting it at this point. You know, it's been quiet for the last couple minutes. Might even fast forward it a little bit here. Um, until we get into some action. Okay, the scout is very important. So Blue Coon does identify the tier 3 has been placed down by Iris. He can respond by, is he going to just go for it right now? Or is he going to maybe sell off a tier 1 more in and try to get his own tier 3 started? Okay, okay. What's up, everybody? Good to see y'all. If, uh, if you're just joining us, maybe you're a new viewer, or if you missed uh, Tuesday Night Show, I got stream currency going, man. You can type explanation mark wolf coins. Oh, here we go, though. Blue Coon. Oh, I think he was just trying to sneak his chameleons by. Oh, he's trying to maybe do a distraction play to run these lizards in. This is very risky. <clears throat> but he's going to get the Tier 3, Warren. Nice pickup, but he's going to trade a lot of lizards to do this. Nice two-pronged attack here from Blue Coon, and he's even going to get the Grisma on the back of it. Blue Coon signed my mouse pad, dude. That was amazing. I don't even care if you lose at this point, which he's he might, to be honest. You know, Iris still has an entire army put together. 
Blue Coon traded a lot of his lizards to do that, but the lizard count has been growing. You know, that additional chameleon squirrel attack on the front kind of bought him a little bit of extra time to get something together, but so many chameleons here from both players, to be honest. Oh, is Blue Coon gonna do it? Blue Coon! Holds the aggression. Denied the expansion, denied the tier three. He's gotta be feeling good at this at the moment. And yeah, this is what I think is really fun about lizards. Just like grabbing this warren or two, you know, and sneaking out. Ooh, he's gonna... Oh, one of those toads only connects on one lizard. That's nice for Blue Coon. You know, those toad engagements, uh, not the best in the world, so... Uh, Blue Coon basically gets out of there scot-free. Scot yeah, you can type explanation mark wolf coins. Uh, you can see how many coins he got. And then between replays, we do a very, very fast betting phase. Uh, I got P-Boop running it, my moderator, in the chat. Uh, so it's only one minute, though. So when you see that message that the bet is open, man, throw down your bet. I try to launch a replay while the bet is still open. Um, <clears throat> so you guys can take a look at the map and the, and the units if you want to be a tryhard, man. Here is floating some money here. He's got to throw something down. Uh, decides to just get more Tier 1. But Blue Coon's been... You know, biting at his heels this entire game. Just poking and prodding here and there. You know, making plays, getting stuff done with these lizards. Even against the Toads uh, from Eris. So, very impressive. I mean, again, if, if if I was in Blue Coon's shoes and I was running a lot of lizard salt Toads, I would have tech switched out. But, you know, Blue Coon's showing us you can make it work with some good play. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm glad P Boop stuck said Vlad Lad. I don't even know how that started, man. I think I was delirious one night and I called him P Boop on accident or something. I can't I can't remember. Chameleon's gonna try to come in. No, those are just reds chameleons, okay. It was the other other way around. I mean, again, Red's in good shape. Iris did recover. He's got, uh, you know, a nice saturation on that base. That base has really been the main mining uh, force. And he's, well, actually, that I guess his third had quite a bit done. Nice chameleon attack over here from Iris. But that gives Blue Coon an opportunity to move in while Iris's chameleons are not in position. But Iris is getting a lot of damage done. Knocks out the main mining base for Blue Coon. And Blue Coon didn't really handle those toe connections correctly. He lost basically his entire flock of lizards. Right at the beginning of the fight to the Toads, but Iris not having all of his chameleons here really weakened the power level of his army in that front fight. Now the question is, does Iris hold? If Iris holds here, which he does, Iris is in phenomenal position now. This game has been so back and forth, man. Sniping this uh, Grismal over to the side was a very nice play by Iris. It's exactly what he needed to get back into this game. But this base has been mining for some time now. It's not going to last too much longer, but... Lacoon realizes he had taken too much damage. Iris wins around. We were guessing how the bow in his name is pronounced, and it evolved eventually into Boop. And then you said, dude, we should totally call him P-Boop. And then we did. Yep, that sounds about right. <laughs> Mark Cicillinus Hopperism is uh, happy. I guess, uh, I guess they voted on Iris here. 95% of the pot. Jeez, nice. <clears throat> okay. Match number seven, guys. We're gonna go into a free-for-all. Um, wait, I skipped stuff. That's not the right match. What? <laughs> I skipped a lot. <laughs> At least I caught myself. I was trying to monitor the chat too much. Okay, okay. B-Boop's on top of it, man. Betting is open for Necromantizer versus Lego Man. Let's hop into it. Throw them wolf coins down. Match number three. All right, spawning, <laughs> spawning on the bottom, we got Lego Man 96. It is opponent up top, Necromantizer. Well, I was supposed to go into game number three. I, I tried to go to game number seven. Like, that's not even close, man. That's a large margin of error. Jeez. Why do you guys put up with me? Okay, so nothing crazy from deck selection um, 
coming out for either player here. The boar has been more and more popular, man. People have been using it quite often, it seems, or at least from the demographic of people who are submitting its scene in replays, rather. I think Tuesday night, I mean, almost every single match had a boar in it. And, uh, you know, Lego Man's deck is pretty cool. I like the 3 tier 2 style with the wolf, you know? Because the wolf is going to really, really buff up those tier 2 units, so why not have a nice uh, variety to choose from there, so... Eight farm openings for both players here. Uh, nothing crazy so far in the early game. No moles. Uh, Necromanticer does have lizards. Um, I do want to note this map is significantly better for Logo Man here. Uh, it's going to be difficult for Necro uh, to get on, out on this map and expand. However, Necro does have these two campfires. So I'd like to see Necro um, get up on these additional campfires rather quickly. Yeah, there we go. Campfire number one. Hell, I'd even go for campfire number two very fast. And then try to put together maybe a one base play. Or, I mean, hell, if he can set up this campfire right and kind of start positioning his army here. He can try to grab this base. He can try to grab this base. Um, but Lego Man's already uh, taken his pocket expand here. And Necro is going to go up and take that Grismill as well. I like that play. You know, the map isn't the best for Necro, but he can still get out there. He can still expand. It's just going to be a little more difficult. So Lego Man throws down the turret. Um, <clears throat> it's not the biggest deal in the world, but typically at, at high level, you only want to like throw down the turrets like right when you need them. Um, because if you go really hard on defense and try to macro up, and I'm your opponent, I can say, well, great, he's gone hard on defense, he's gone hard on macro, so he doesn't have an army, I can go hard on macro and, and not be threatened without building defense and, and while putting together maybe an expensive army, maybe take the food that you invested in defense and I'll invest it into a fast tier three, uh, which you're not going to be able to punish. But, you know, one or two turrets really isn't the biggest deal in the world. You even see Necro throwing down a turret, so... It's basically trying to dissuade Necro from, from coming in here. And look at this. Lots of money. Lego just sold something off. It looks like he's trying to find the right spot to throw down that Wolf Warren. He wanted to be sneaky with it, but I guess he couldn't quite get back here. Uh, so just throws it down in one of the safer positions you can put it in, in his spawn. And lots of turrets to dissuade the attack from coming out from Necro. But, I mean, look at the response from Necro, right? He's just like, great, I'll just build a lot of economy. I think that's exactly how you you respond to an opponent who's turtling up, you know. Turtling up can be very dangerous in Tooth and Tail because you uh, run out of money very quickly. There are strategies that make it work for sure, like you know, hunker down on two bases behind a little defense, get a bunch of owls, you know, go for something crazy stupid like an eight farm fox or something and try to hold on with turrets and stuff. My favorite use of defense personally is in, in like a siege. Like I, I like to get like ferrets and stuff, try to take one of these grist mills, throw down a turret or two, poke with my ferrets. I like to be that annoying bastard. <laughs> so Lego Man uh, gets that wolf going. I like that he sold the turret and rebuilt it to lift the the supply block, if you will, on that wolf. Um, get that in production ASAP. Another thing with tier 3 too is like they take so long to build. It, it's almost always the correct play to sell something off and get that tier 3 building, right? Like sell a tier 1 warren or something. Um, it's either the correct play to do that, or if you're in a lot of pressure, right, and you think, well, I, I don't want to sell off my tier 1 warring because I might get attacked, then you should probably sell the tier 3, right, and try to muster up the biggest army you can at the moment. Um, not saying Lego Man was blocked there. He, 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 uh, he actually performed that sell pretty nicely. I wasn't paying super close attention, but just a little, little tips and tricks. Hey, thanks for the follow, Reborn Gamer. I appreciate it, man. I don't know why my little follow alert didn't go off. I, I tested it right before I started streaming and it worked. I don't know. I don't know, man, but thank you nonetheless. Give that man a couple wolf coins, P Boop, so he can so he can do some betting if he if he pleases. Yeah, I, I don't know why I agreed to it, but I gave power I gave P Boop the the power to distribute wolf coins, man. So hopefully he, he yields that. 
he yields that fairly. We want to make it like a rare thing, but I don't know how involved I'm going to get with the currency, but I was thinking it'd be cool to give extra wolf coin to people who submit, or even if you didn't submit, like, if you're just in the match or something, give those people a little bit of wolf coin, you know? Little things like that I think would be pretty fun. Is that how he magically has so many coins? Probably. Man, Necromantizer has taken so many bases here on this map. He's got the boar on the way. The wolf is here, though, from Lego Man. And right now, it's just buffing up uh, his economy a little bit. Hmm, I don't know. Like, Lego Man's got snakes, right? The snakes could, could deal with this boar very, very quickly. But a lot of falcons here, really for both players, but mainly for Necro. Three base economy here for both players. So we're getting to a pretty swole late game, right? Like, these guys haven't really been attacking one another. Uh, they've just been building up these ultra mega armies. And let's see it. Lego Man feels like he's ready to move out. The engagement's coming in. Where's the target fire going to be prioritized? Looks like Necro is just trying to deal with the, the Falcons as it can. And Necromantizer runs through that army. Those snakes really didn't get the job done of poisoning this boar. Ooh, Necro wants to keep this boar alive, but 3 HP, it is going to go down. And now Necro has to make the decision. if He's got to decide if he has enough, if he can push through, or you know he doesn't want to overextend, so he pulls back for the time being. He sells off a couple warrens to get that production going. I love it. Ooh, he thought about selling the boar, but decided to sell Chameleon instead and get another boar going. The wolf remains here, though, for Lego Man, which is a nice little victory. He didn't lose his tier 3 there, but he lost a lot of his tier 2. Basically, all of them. I hope this doesn't cause wolf coin inflation. I know, I know. Well, P-Boop, like, we're trying to give it away very, very sparsely. You can also do... So my my sub emoticon, you can type fox spam, and you can use it for ten wolf coins. Thought that was a pretty cool idea from Prebimbo. Dude, if I if I could, I'd just let you guys use that for free, man. I really appreciate my subscribers. It's super awesome, but it's a really cool emote, man. What people are like, do I want to spend ten wolf coins? Hmm. It depends how much of a wolf coin baller you are, I guess. All right, Necro, moving in. He thinks he's got enough. That's a lot of skunk gas here, but the boar is pushing through. A lot of these falcons are still in the sky. And so far, this is looking like a pretty good push here for Necromantizer. Nice territory expansion here uh, for our yellow player, allowing him to heal up pretty quickly and stay pretty close to the front lines at the same time. All right, Necromantizer's moving in. This boar is a really big deal. The poison begins to go down on the boar, but it's not enough. Necromantizer is just running over this army. The boar tanking so much damage there, like 50 HP. That's that's a lot. That's a lot of dead squirrels. Otherwise, a nice victory there for Necro. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to hop into the 2v2. I'm going to give you all a second right here at the start to figure out. So it's so in 2v2s, you type explanation mark bet, uh, either RG or BY or something like that. BY versus GR, yeah. So, so, so that's how you do 2v2 betting. That's the best way I've figured out to do it so far. If you guys have a better idea, let me know. Uh, Marks, he's got to type explanation mark wolf coins with an S on the end of it. All right, so we have a 2v2 here in the bottom. We've got our blue and yellow team, Premium Bow and Furmar. The classic combo. And over to the right, we've got Premium Farting, James Bowring, and Dr. Blue. 
think I'm not gonna say it. I'll say it. I don't care. Here we go. James is moving in with some moles. No, it's just a little bit of a fake. He's gonna push back for now. He forced a mole out of premium bow. Gonna slow down old P-Boop's economy a little bit, but, uh, you know, James took a hit to his own economy to, to pull that shenaniganry. Everybody's betting blue and yellow. You know, Premier Bow does submit losses every now and then. But you, see now, see now, P Boop, that we're doing the betting, man. You're gonna have to submit losses more often, dude. So people, so people aren't on to you. They're like, oh, a P Boop game. Just, just vote on P Boop's team, right? We have seen, we've seen a few. I remember a few where he submitted losses. But you know, it's just, it's, it's hard for Premier Bow to submit losses because he's just the king of two v two, right? Like. How often does Premium Boat lose 2v2? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the betting is like super, super fast. Because the game's so fast-paced. If I gave it like a 5-minute betting period or something, you know, I don't think I need to continue that that thought, right? Everybody everybody understands that. Maybe 1 minute's too fast. We, we might do 2 minutes. I don't know. You gotta, you gotta be ready to bet, man. That's not waiting around. Oh, Fermar backs out of the fast fox. I was looking forward to that. Uh, but James throwed down an owl somewhere. There it is. Nice owl positioning there. A little bit risky, but um, you know he's kind of gambling that it's not going to get scouted, right? Owl on the way for both of our red and green team here. Yeah, <laughs> ready in the chat. He actually loses a lot. Ah, yes. I set him up, you knock him down. All right. All right, all right, all right. Nice, nice forward, uh, aggressive mill positioning here from Fermar. Premier Bow trying to get that balloon down. These owls are on the way, though. They should be starting production here shortly. Yeah, James just got paid for a Dr. Blue. Uh, has one, not one, but two owls uh, coming up. One's in production, the other Warren just started. This ferret gonna try to deny the balloon, uh, but Premium Bow making those ferret shots miss a little bit by microing his squirrels up there, allows the balloon to finish. This artillery cannon, though, is a real story here. The balloon and artillery cannon is a cool little combo, as the balloon has a lot of vision and the artillery cannon has a lot of range, uh, but doesn't have a lot of vision, right? So artillery cannon is going to be a pain, but the owls are almost here. The ferrets! Oh, the ferrets! Get some beautiful shots in. Knock that artillery cannon down literally just in time. No refund either for the blue and yellow team. Oh, man. Owl number one is out for both of the uh, green and red players. Fox Warren gets uh, placed right down at the front lines. Blue is very all in with this position. You know, he's basically saying we're not gonna budge. If we budge, this fox warren goes down. So many mice here. I'd love to see him just use these mice up, man. But they really don't have a whole lot besides that. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, oh, so many toads from Fermar too. These are not gonna get value against these, these mice in, in most circumstances, at least like harassing mice. So many moles! Mulligan. P Boop gets the scout off. Mice coming in to harass. Gonna detonate some toads, get a lot of value there. They wanna go in with this mole toad push. Is it gonna be enough? Really not a lot. Not like a well rounded army here from red and green, right? Some tier two, some tier three, not really any tier one. But the mice kind of make up for that, I suppose. Owls three and four are on the way, and that's when this owl count is going to start getting ridiculous here. You know, <laughs> the amount of toads Fermar has, he needs to be careful. He's going to detonate these mice. But that's very expensive to get rid of these mice. Is that the opening blue and yellow needed, though? With all these moles here. They're pushing in. 
It's kind of the, the point Mishu was making uh, on the last show. Red gets knocked out. You know, yeah, it's in a, it's cost inefficient, but if it if it gives you the punch you need to break through, you know, who cares if it's cost inefficient? If you trade a whole bunch of toads into free units, but then you win the fight or win the game off it, then there you go. And it looks like the toad play from Fermar uh, worked out very nicely here. As yellow and blue should be taking the game. more moles because why not <laughs> I like James's style here oh is he trying to sneak the chameleons in he's got two chameleons somewhere these moles tanking for the toads toads the goods GG for Mar and Peeboot take the match Yay for coins, says Proto Cam. I don't know, man. If nobody voted against them, though, then you don't really get any coins. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't think anybody even gets anything. Yeah, if 100% if of people vote for one side, you know what I'm saying? There's no, there's no coins to be had. Match number five, you guys. Cold Warp Gates versus the child. I'll give Premium Bow a second to get this betting started. Did you lose your coins? Uh, I don't think you lost your coins. You actually have more. You gained five coins. You bet ten. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly how it works, you guys. I apologize. But I don't think you lost coins. I just reviewed the chat real quick. Mr. Pancakes. Alright, match number five. But let me know. Like, stress test this thing. If anything weird like that happens. You know, if you place a bet down and win and then don't at least get your coins back or something and that is a thing I need to figure out but in the bottom guys we have cold warp gates spawning up top we've got the child betting is open right now but it's gonna close very very soon so get that bet in if you want to participate uh, we've got Fox versus Fox here but cold warp gates does have that owl I really like the child's build I think it's a nice um, nice standard way to approach the Fox you know I, I think it makes sense like uh, it, it has a lot of flexibility in the openings it can do. You know, you can go for the tradi traditional, like, Fox Rush style. Um, you could go for a Skunk Squirrel Pigeon opening. You can kind of take it into, you know, mid-game, late-game, which is, you know, regular style. Lots of Tier 1, lots of Tier 2, eventually get to Tier 3 in there. And then you have Falcons for later on. Falcons, uh, I think, are really cool in a Fox deck because it's kind of one way to answer that. Well, we fall off in the late-game problem, right? Because the Falcons add a uh, nice late game uh, power capability once you get a high enough number. And Cold Warp Gates, I think, is running this uh, Fox Owl style really cool as well here. Um, you know, Squirrel Pitch and Skunk is always nice to have in almost any deck just because it's a nice, strong opening. You know, it's not broken or too strong or anything like that. It's just a nice, strong opening. Um, and then, you know, he's got the Fox if he wants to do that and eventually get into the Owls. So... Keeping the turret, though, I, I I think my recommendation on a 2 tier 3 deck would probably be drop the turrets. I don't know. It's a tough call to make. I, I run turrets most of the time. There's a couple. I've actually been running more different decks lately. Um, and uh, I've been experimenting with a couple without turrets in them. So we see uh, pretty standard openings from both players here. 8 farms, 2 tier 1, into the tier 2. Um, Cold Warp Gate setting himself up nicely for a little push out. Uh, the child's got a little bit of money saved up, but he did just get back from a long scout about on the map and uh, gets that additional warren placed down. So, and overall, this map isn't terrible. You know, Cold Warp Gates at least has access to a, a second base. He's got a couple campfires over here. I mean, the child's got a ton of bases over here, but we I, I don't often get too worried about that because, you know, we might not even see the game get to a three base situation, and even if we do, um, Cold Warp Gates could push out, you know, start claiming this high ground, take this base here. It'd be hard, but it wouldn't be impossible. So the child tries to poke in. Uh, I like little plays like that. Doesn't commit, you know, loses a squirrel or two for it, but kind of just walks over and says hi, you know. Hey, are you doing anything crazy? Can you, 
deal with this. Okay, then I'll just back out. But here we go. This is one of the this is the first real fight of the match. It's gonna be very important here. Who can get the better skunk gas coverage? Who can keep their skunks alive? And so far, it looks like Cold Warp Gates is winning this engagement. Uh, he trades uh, pretty effectively with the tier one there. Uh, but Child didn't take crippling damage or anything. He he got his skunks out. Uh, so the Child is down a few tier one at this point. But not game ending stuff or anything. The real story here, though, is the fact that Cold Warp Gate has financed that second base on the back of all this. You know, he, he, he won that first little tiny engagement, got a couple squirrels ahead, right? He won that second engagement, got a few more squirrels ahead. And he's got his economy going. I like this scout here from Warp Gates. He uh, is just going to run around the map and verify uh, that the child has not taken a second base. And rather than expanding, the child has decided to go uh, more into tier two at the moment. So. The child really needs to get something done, or throw down a second base. Um, ooh, gonna go for the fox. Uh, but Cold Warp Gates throws down his own fox, so almost at the same exact time. I was thinking maybe being ahead on the fox timing or something could be the way uh, for the child to get into it. But I think the big problem here is the child just it simply isn't aware that Cold Warp Gates has that additional base, so he probably thinks he's alright. And that base was pretty early from Cold Warp Gates. I mean, now we're getting to the point, you kind of want to have a second base established by like the four minute mark at the very latest, unless you're uh, really going for some uh, one base all in style. So now I'm getting a little worried for the child, as uh, once that five minute mark hits, you know, losing so many farms is going to be a very big deal if you're only on one base. Child's going to find an angle where you can get in here and only be under the fire of one of the turrets. He knocks out the tier 2 for Cold Warp Gates, but oh, his skunk lives! If the child can get out of here with this tier 2 alive, he's gonna stay for the time being, though. Two of those tier 2 go down. I think this other tier 2 is gonna fall as well. The reinforcement's getting picked off by the turrets. Nice sell-off those on those turrets by Cold, uh, Cold Warp Gates there, trying to finance this fox ASAP. Uh, so the child, like, won that, but he overstayed his welcome. I feel like if he would've got out of there, with those three tier two, you know, he, he would be in a fantastic spot right now. But again, I, I hate to keep bringing it up, but I mean, the the fact that Cold Warp Gates has an expansion going. Now, only two farms on it isn't the biggest deal in the world, but it still kind of is, right? Like, I've seen games and played in games where a campfire made a very big difference, and that's just one, one farm, you know? So the child knows what's up now. It wants to get in here and harass his base. His fox is almost here. Nice target fire down. <clears throat> target firing down the skunk. Warp Gates trying to target fire the Falcons first. And now the Fox is on the board here for the child. He's going to push through and try to get some damage done. He'd love to snipe both these pigs, but the Fox is going to be here shortly for Cold Warp Gates. And the child's Fox is injured. If Cold Warp Gates' Fox shoots it, it's going to die. It gets healed back up because of these pigeons, however. Ooh, the shot gets... Oh, Cold Warp... Oh, my God. All right, so the child... Wow. Nicely done by Warp Gates there. So the child um, got the first shot off with his fox on his opponent's fox, right? And that brings your opponent's fox to 1 HP. So he's like, oh, I'm going to get it. And he runs in and tries to target fire it. Uh, but his commander dies. And your commander dying when you have a fox is basically the end of the world, man. Because the fox is very micro-intensive. Uh, if your commander goes down, your opponent can just easily kill it. And that is insane. So I think Warp Gates might just win this game if he plays it right from here. Both players on very low economies. Now, the child does have a turret, so he could try to build a turret or two to keep this fox out. But he's pretty, you know, this is a pretty spread out area. You're not really going to do that effectively. Instead, the child just decides, you know what, man? I don't care. He's got the fox. I'm just going to see if I can go in here and end the game. I think this is the right move. The fox can be boxed in with these units, or the fox just simply won't kill everything fast enough in some situations, but the Fox adding a lot of value here. Cold Warp Gate still has those skunks. Those skunks helped out tremendously as well. And I think that's just gotta be game. Cold Warp Gate should be able to just win from here, right? Really cool match though. I almost want to play the Benny Hill theme at this point. But the long coat theme is just so much better. Oh, there's a couple of turrets. The child's going to try to hang on here. But this fox can literally just hang out 
right here next to the Warrens. Take a nap. Just wake up and get a headshot and go back to sleep. The child sees the writing on the wall. Cold Warp Gates wins a round. Okay, guys. Match number six, we have another Vincent versus Bratmo game here. Vincent and Bratmo both submitted uh, this time around. I've still got one Vincent versus Bratmo locked in for Tuesday night if I don't get patched out of my archives, so. We are about to start betting, ladies and gentlemen, for Vincent versus Bratmo. It is a very, very quick betting period. So if you want to participate, man, go ahead and check how many Wolf Coins you got right now and, and get ready to throw them down as P Boop has just opened up the betting. You got one minute here. Explanation mark bet Vincent or Bratmo. Let's hop into it. Match number six. Okay, spawning in the bottom, we've got Bratmo. <clears throat> and his opponent up top, Vincent. All right, Vincent running some old school pile style stuff here uh, with just the lizards and a lot of defense. Uh, really cool play style to see. It's it's fallen out of the meta, out of popularity. It never really was super super popular. You saw some high level players doing it um, from time to time, but it it's always kind of been one of those unique decks that's just kind of fun to play, right? However, it can be very uh, map dependent. It can get hard countered. And Bratmo here playing some interesting stuff as well. Uh, both players with Lizard and Barbed Wire, which is kind of hilarious. We might see a whole bunch of Barbed Wire come out and just negate the Lizards from either side. I don't know. Do you think I should do two minutes for the bet? Is one minute too? Is one minute too fast? Because I keep seeing people like trying to bet and then getting denied. Uh, maybe two minutes would be better. Ooh, Vincent trying to be cheeky here. With a quick turret, it's almost going to get up, but these lizards just barely get out in time. Deny that. That's going to give Bratmo a lot of momentum in this game. That's 120 food that Vincent has invested so early on. And Bratmo, you know, I wasn't really paying attention. I was kind of watching the chat, but... You know, neither player has opened up traditionally here. You know, six farm double from Bratmo, even into a triple... You know, some kind of 6-7 farm, Warren, Gristmill proxy, turret rush style from Vincent. And look at this, Bratmo just trying to get into a very fast owl. This should get scouted, though, by Vincent. Ooh, he doesn't get the scout. Bratmo's got to be happy about that. Two minutes is too long, game could be half over by then. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm saying too, man. I think we're just gonna have to do one minute. And you and you betters will just have to have to get have to get fast, man. Gotta gotta show us that APM. Tooth and Tail doesn't take APM, just try to bet in Tooth and Tail TV's uh, stream, right? Okay, okay. Where are we going in this match? Bramo sold off the owl. Um, and instead decides to go into some economy here, getting up some barbed wire. Maybe he's starting to think perhaps Vincent only has lizards here, but that, that's kind of kind of a weird call to make so early on in the game. I mean, just because you haven't seen any other units doesn't necessarily mean that they aren't there. Nice uh, angle here found from Vincent. Going to move in. I think he wanted to just try to snipe that grist mill. Uh, by the way that he ran in with his lizards, I thought he'd try to go for the Warrens or the Pigs or something, but the the lizards there for Bratmo were close enough to push that back, and look at this wall of barbed wire. Mistria would be proud here. Man, I love the rain effects in this game.
All right, so we're gonna stabilize, and uh, both players take an expansion here. Very uh, aggressive expansion for Finson, but it makes sense with so much defense in his deck, right? Like, he wants to start that contain. He wants to throw up a couple turrets, get some balloons, eventually maybe even a cannon. And uh, we're <laughs> gonna see a pretty weird game, I feel like, here. Ooh, Finson gonna try to come in, but denied by the barbed wire. This economy from Bratmo is getting very real though, and he feels confident enough to throw down another Owl. He really doesn't have a whole lot of Lizards, just two Warrens worth the Tier 1. Lots of defense, a very healthy economy, and a Tier 3 on the way. The Artillery Cannon gets placed down by Fencet. Oh, Bratmo gets it, loses all his Lizards, but a trade he's willing to make. 180 food from Fencet there, but Bratmo's got nothing right now, but this barbed wire, oh my god, that barbed wire. Wow. The pig does die, but still, that was insane value. The barbed wire doesn't even go down, man. It's just going to heal up. Be ready to do it again. That's crazy. I need a snake, BRB, says Vlad Lad. I wonder if he meant to type, I need a snack. Or maybe if he has like a pet ball python. And he was like, oh wait, let me go get my pet snake. Hang on. I like to, I like to envision the, the latter option. Man, I want a snack. Now I want a snack. Damn it, Vlad Lad. Some boiled peanuts, dude. Oh man, boiled peanuts are so good. It's only like a North Florida, South Georgia thing, apparently. Which is crazy. Because they're in like every gas station around here. Alright, the first owl is out. Owl number two planted down. Bratmo, in a commanding position this game. His economy is just through the roof. Vincent's lizard only strategy. Really having a huff t uh, tough time here against the barbed wire of his opponent. Boil of peanuts, says Marxist. That sounds pretty good, says Blah Blah. See, you guys don't even know, man. Yeah, you just take... Listen. Alright. Go to the store. Get, like, a big bag of peanuts. Get your crock pot out. And just boil those suckers for, like, a day. With a bunch of spices in there, right? And it's not even... Like, it's a pretty healthy snack. And it's so delicious. You make them spicy. So good, man. I mean, I don't see what Fincic could do here, right? I mean, maybe he gets a ton of lizards and tries a base race. I, I see an angle or two he might be able to squeeze through the defenses of Fence of, of Bratmo. This artillery cannon is going to give him some value, going to allow him to start harassing and trading back some blows. But it's not the one owl you got to worry about. It's the three, four, five owls, right, that are going to be coming eventually. Now, if Bratmo, though, takes too much damage from this artillery cannon, the Grismal has taken some fire here. Yeah, it's in range. Dude, that range is so crazy. Yeah, I, I don't understand why more more areas don't have boiled peanuts, man. Like, it's such, like, dude, any gas station you go to in North Florida has boiled peanuts in it. I just kind of grew up my whole life with it. Yeah, Brambo realizing he needs to get this artillery cannon dealt with, but the owl almost goes down. He's forced to pull back. Vincent's got no economy here. He's bleeding out units, but he's doing a lot of damage here. Uh, to Bratmo, really wants to get this artillery cannon, it, or this Grisville down. It's gonna live for the time being. Vincent, commander goes down, and Vincent just doesn't have the money to keep this up for very much longer. This artillery cannon um, getting knocked out might be the nail in the coffin here for Vincent. Yeah, like, I, 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 I got a new job, but at my old job, I used to travel, like, all over the place. And I go to, like, Chicago or something and try to order a sweet tea at a restaurant. They'd be like, we don't have sweet tea. We've got unsweet tea and, you know, you can use the sugar on the table or whatever. And I'm like, dude, 
It's 2018, man. Like, how have we not you know, gotten sweet tea to the north? Like, I don't believe it. It's, in, it's impossible. <laughs> they don't have sweet tea. <laughs> Buffering says pee boop. I don't know what you mean by that. If you meant the stream is buffering, I haven't dropped any frames, my man, so I think it might be on you. All right, so we're gonna get into a free for all. I'm not sure how P Boop's gonna get the uh, the betting going on this one. Uh, there is an option if you look on the contest. If you're listening to me, Premium Bow, there is a thing that says like add option, so you can make four options. All right. Okay, hang on. Okay. Okay. P boops having some issues here, so I'll get I'll get the bet going, you guys. Give me one second here. Oh crap! Contest title. Skippy versus Dingo versus No versus Muffins. So Skippy. Okay, betting is almost open, you guys. Give me one second. So it's going to be either Skippy, Dingo, No with two O's, or Muffins. Those are your options. And the betting is starting now. Boom. The bet is open. Okay. 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 Let's hop into the game. So spawning at the bottom, we've got I'm throwing Muffins. His opponent over here. No, it's not that. Up top, we've got Dingo. And to the right, Skippy. Okay, let me... Okay, okay. So let's see what's going on in this game, you guys. We've got a Badger, we've got a Boar, and that's it. The other players are not running any Tier 3. Uh, muffins has the Moles. He's throwing Muffins, he's throwing Moles. Nothing crazy so far in this early game. Five Farm Warren from Dingo. Yeah, a little bit of a safe opening, but I, I don't mind that in a, in a free-for-all. Uh, no, it's not that. Hasn't spent the money yet. Could be a new player. Could be up to up to no good. But the rest of the guys are just macroing up uh, Tate Farms here. Skippy also throwing down. Actually, six farm doubles, so that is a thing. Uh, he, maybe he's going to decide to get aggressive here. There we go. No, it's not that. Five farm Squirrel Falcon. Let's see if that's the build, man. The build that brings the victory. <laughs> Everybody just voted on Dingo. <laughs> yeah, I know the the one minute voting, man. It's it's super quick. It's super super quick. I don't think it's as fluid for like team games, right? But for one v one, I think it's it's pretty pretty efficient efficient and effective okay so I'm a little worried for no it's not that here he's got these Falcons out so maybe if he can micro them really well but his economy is gonna be quite behind uh, that of his opponents here everybody else just kind of playing normal Skippy trying to grab that expansion here so let's see man okay tier 2 is starting to come down for the other players as well uh, nothing to say just yet into this game. A lot of grist mills here, so really everybody's got some expansion options. Might be hard for Dingo to expand. He's, this is really the one base he's got. I mean, I don't know. These bases are very close together. Uh, no, it's not that. It's got a nice little split over here getting up to three bases. And really yellow, blue, and green are just going to have to fight over who gets to get up to three bases. You know what I mean? Everybody's turtling up so far, though. I might actually do a little fast-forwarding as the game progresses here. We can get some to some action. So, two players going up to two base. Uh, Dingo trying to steal base from under the nose of No, It's Not That. 
I'm keeping my eye on the production tabs up here. Uh, no tier 3 uh, being planted down just yet. Could be building a couple moles. Normally when you build moles, you're getting ready to move out, but I don't think so. I think he's just kind of hanging out for the time bu being, building up a little bit of an army here. No real engagements thus far. Didn't go dancing, though. Looks like he's getting ready to make a play. Oh, he decides to burrow home for the time being. Maybe throw down a couple more things. Oh, he burrowed over to his side base to get some economy going. Now, Red, no Red does not know about it, actually. Nobody knows about it. So, so far, Operation Sneaky Base is successful, and Dingo's gonna try to push in here when Red is not ready. The balloon goes down, Red is in some trouble. Oh, I didn't even notice this from I'm throwing muffins. Very nicely done with that balloon, super annoying. Uh, just sniping in on Red, and poor little Red man. Getting attacked from both sides here, and I think uh, I think he is gonna be our first victim in this free-for-all. But at the same time, Skippy the Dragon, Getting a lot of counter damage done to Dingo. That is awesome. Really well played by Skippy, but while Skippy's not home, I'm throwing muffins. Is getting counter damage done to him, so. What? Green moves out, kills red, right? And then blue responds by crippling uh, green. And then yellow responds by crippling blue. Lots and lots of backstabbing here. Why do you gotta stab people in the back? Because it deals a lot of damage, and it's easy. Alright, so Dingo Dance is not dead, but he's left with very little in this match and now blue and yellow are kind of the top contenders if I had to put my money on anybody here I'd definitely be on I'm throwing muffins you know he's got some damage done in this game he didn't lose a whole lot to do it and he ha still has his second base rolling meanwhile Dingo is just kind of back to the basics here trying to get out some tier one uh, hoping that his opponents maybe leave him alone really what Dingo wants is for yellow and blue to kill each other and that looks like what's gonna begin to happen right here but Yellow's commander goes down right as the engagement begins. Skippy the Dragon is not micro-ring though. They're probably just newer players. It's all good. Yeah, you typically want to focus fire down key units with your army. Um, it makes you trade trade more efficiently. It's all good, man. It's just a free-for-all and unranked. These are just some guys having fun. Not, not playing you know, super try-hard or anything. All right, man. All right, man. Yellow. Yellow looking for some blood. Nobody's really even scouted. Yeah, well, Skippy scouted green. Skippy knows that green Green made it back. Okay. But yellow's got such a good economy, man. Well, I guess greens isn't bad because we're now, you know, we're 6 minutes 30 seconds in, so the main bases are basically uh, farmed out at this point, so... Nice little denial attempt of that expansion. Denial of that expansion attempt, I should say. But I'm throwing muffins, is coming back for more. Rex through the army of blue, and he might just be pushing blue out of this game, leaving us down to Dingo Dancing versus Muffins. Blue really just doesn't have anything left. But he's gonna stay. Until he draws his last breath. Blah! Into the kitchens. Alright, man. Vlad Lad's been left alone ever since he knocked out Red and, and lost his main base. I'm sorry, Vlad Lad. Well, Dingo dancing. I think I've just had a lot of Vlad Lad free for alls or something lately. <laughs> I got Vlad Lad on the mind, you guys. Ooh, getting that poison stack going. That's so much tier one. Ah, uh, I'm throwing muffins though. Really shouldn't be moving out as he's waiting for this badger. He should wait for the badger and then go, but Dingo just has so many squirrels. He's even got some snakes if the badger does show up. Snakes deal very nicely with that sort of thing. But Dingo just might have too much right here, right now. 
he's coming in for the kill. I don't think that badger is going to see the light of day. Yeah, the badger even got sold off, I suppose. Or maybe it died. I don't think it did. Maybe I'm just crazy and there's no badger to begin with. And that is going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. Bingo is going to roll through here. Knock out on throwing muffins and take the victory in this free-for-all. Now, I think Dingo had 100% of the votes to win, though. <clears throat> so, no wolf coins for you guys. Ah, uh, I'm throwing muffins is gonna be, gonna be meanie. Don't do this, you guys. You're just, you're just delaying the game. Oh, but I guess if you're gonna try to mole him, I can't get too mad at you for trying that sort of thing. Dingo takes the match. Okay. Okay, guys. Boom. Dingo wins. Back to contest. Let us go to contest. I am confused. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. All right, all right. Sorry about that, guys. Figuring out this betting bot thing still. So. All right, so we got a Mishia versus Mishi, Mishi coming up. <clears throat> Throw those wolf coins down. And betting is going to open now. Boom. Alright, the bet is open for Amishi vs. Mishi. Let's hop into it, match number 8. Alright, spawning on the left, we've got Mishi. And his opponent, to the right, Amishia. Okay. Okay, okay. What is going on here? Amishira rocking the owl. Mishi's got the boar. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. More and more use out of the boar in the past couple weeks. And uh, betting's about to close if anybody else wants to bet. Get your wolf coins in there now. Boom. Boom. It's super fast betting. I might, I don't know. I might change it two minutes. Maybe one minute's okay. This map is crazy. Um, both players can get an expansion. A little bit easier of a start here for Mishi. Uh, but not impossible for Mishi. She can just move out here, claim this area, maybe even get this third. And she might set herself up even to kind of keep Mishi in. Mishi's got a little bit of like the easier start being up here on the double high ground, having the expansion on the single high ground. Um, but it's going to be tough for Mishi to bridge the gap into a third base. Mishi playing very greedy, uh, going up to a very quick grist mill here, um, but it will probably be unpunished. And let's see what a Mishi is going to go for this game, saving up a little bit of money for that tier 2 Warren. What's it going to be? Perhaps a skunk? Indeed it is. And be sure it might just be gearing up uh, for that classic squirrel pigeon skunk move out. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Mishi's got lizards this game though, and lizards I feel like do very well against that initial push. Now, Mishi has identified uh, the greed level for Mishi here, you know, taking that second base very, very quickly. She's got some options. She can take a second base of her own, which is what it looks like she wants to do. Or she could try to build a lot of units to try to break Mishi. But I think trying to match Mishi's economy is probably the better play. Because Mishi is a very good player. And you don't want to take that gamble of trying to break him. And then he holds, right? And then all of a sudden you're in a you're in a rough spot. So uh, Mishi does know that the tier 2 is on the way. And indeed that it is going to be the skunk. And he's going to try to combat it with Squizzard. And again, I think this matchup could really go either way. It's going to depend on the control. Um, you know, these lizards have a nice potential 
uh, to get up and knock these skunks out. Um, but even if they do, the skunks might do enough damage to uh, the squirrels, right, uh, with all the gas. So we'll see, man. Mishira's economy is behind Mishi's, um, but she is going to uh, to catch him here shortly. And here we go. Mishi's ready to move out. He wants to find the right angle to get in on these skunks with these lizards. It's a nice little choke here, though, that he's got to run through. Mishi's going to commit in. Skunk number one falls immediately. Uh, but Mishi loses a lot of tier one in that engagement uh, for that skunk. So yeah, the skunk goes down, but the amount of tier one that Mishi lost to do so, yeah, you you could probably argue Mishi ended up uh, winning that. <laughs> Poor spam lane, dude. I, I should I should have an emote for every tier three. That'd be amazing. We need Wolf Spam next. I need to get some crazy glorious AFB Wolf Wolf face. That'd be awesome. Again, man, I, I like this barbed wire from Mishi or from Mishi right here, kind of closing off that attack path, forcing Mishi to go through here, where his units are not going to be able to get the surface area that he wants uh, very easily. Ooh, the chameleon though, gonna. Pick away at this barbed wire and knock it out eventually, opening up that other attack path that Mishi really needs. And this is where it's gonna get kinda interesting here. Mishi's gotta go home as he's floating too much money. He's gotta sell some or he's gotta build some stuff rather. Uh, but now Mishi's really gotta stop really gotta figure out a way to deal with the Mishira's position in order to expand, unless he can somehow sneak up there, right? Nice, picks off that campfire. Um, because if Mishira's already established here, yeah. And she throws the owl down. Now she's even taking this base. So a third base option for Mishi would be very difficult to get. I, I wonder if he's not even really considering that option anymore. And just kind of conceding that he needs to win this off two bases. All right, Mishi is inching forward. More and more Barbara going down. These campfires starting to take some hits. Mishi runs in though. Is he gonna have enough? These chameleons are certainly gonna help here, but the skunk clouds are, are getting some decent damage done. Not quite the cover that Amistria needed, and Mishi takes that push very nicely. Mishi's even got a boar to back this up, but it's gonna be a long ways away, and the owl is fast approaching. But Mishi secures the high ground, which is a very important step number one onto getting out on this map and, and claiming that much needed third base position. All right, if Mishi can just hold on, man, getting up to three owls here. But Mishi's got a, Mishi's got the skunks. Mishi's got the boar. Mishi's got the turrets. These are all things that can deal with mice very nicely. Blah, 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 blah. All right, Mishi's got a clock on him, though, man. He can't wait around forever. He just really wants to secure this high ground as a pushable position, trying to throw down some turrets as a spot to back up to. Going to move in with his uh, you know, mobile units and just knock this Grismal down while Mishi's not in position. And also, these turrets give Mishi a nice place to fall back to against the mice and help buffer off that damage. But Mishira... Getting that third base nearly completely saturated. You should replace the sound file for the owl with you making the noise. Dude, why bother? You can't tell the difference, man. My owl impression is perfect. Blah. 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 All right, here we go. Mishi moving in. Powerful army here from Mishi. He needs to be careful. He can't afford to to bleed off units of these mice. Every squirrel, every lizard is really going to start to count at this phase for Mishi as his income is going to become rather limited momentarily. Keeps the majority of those chameleons alive there. Very nice. Oh 
just trying to push in and, and knock out barbed wire wherever Amistria isn't. These chameleons are going to enjoy that additional regeneration rate as uh, Mishi is in territory right here on the front lines. Oh my god, I'm so looking forward to tomorrow night, you guys. You know you're old when you, like, because I've, I've just been so busy lately on the weekends with, you know, friends and family and my band and, and things like that. So it's like, for once, I don't have plans tomorrow night. And I'm just, I'm so happy to not have plans. <laughs> like, I haven't had, like, a nice, you know what I'm saying? Where it's just like, dude, I'm going to order a pizza. I'm going to hang out and play some video games. I'll probably play some Tooth and Tail. I picked up Octopath Traveler on the Switch. I've been really enjoying that game. Mishi's pushing through. He might actually be breaking the back of a Mishra here. Knocks out an owl. I think he even got two owls there. The boar gonna stay alive against very low. Mishra is gonna push him back to the last second. You know, Mishu wins a very nice engagement. However, again, the big story is the fact that Mishi's broke, but then again, Mishi's actually throwing some farms down on this third base. I like the pig death sound too. I don't know, man. Mishi's working his way back into this game. I almost feel like Mishi should kind of tech over to a lot, a lot of Falcons at this point, right? Because Mishi really doesn't have much that can shoot air, just as just as core tier one. Ooh, Mishi going for the chameleon play. Gonna try to get some damage done to this expansion, but Amishia knows what's up. Her commander's in position, but commander runs over there to place some farms down. Mishi's chameleons are gonna knock out three farms there and get out scot-free. Nicely done there from Mishi. It looks like old Premium Bo is having some internet troubles, so I will take over doing the contest stuff. Uh, no worries, my man. Alright, so this is the kind of connections that Mishri is looking for. Uh, but as Woody Punnett in the chat is pointing out, this Barbar is a little bit of a double-edged sword here for Mishri as it is slowing down her mice. Two owls are out. I honestly don't, I really either player could win from here, right? It's almost, I think it's looking pretty favored for Mishi, maybe? I don't know, this engagement's pretty huge. So much gas on the field for both players, but mainly yellow, but Owl falls, unfortunately, there for Mishi. Nice pick up there for Mishi. And Mishi's been doing a great job, even without any pigeons, uh, keeping this boar alive through constant engagements. Yeah, I really like turrets against owls, man. That's how I used to play it, like, when the game first kind of came out, like, August and September. Owls were pretty good back then, too. They've changed since then, but just in that. And I, I liked Fox, um, so I would just build, like, a wall of turrets in the late game to try to deal with owls. You can still do that today, definitely. Lose a chameleon there, a little bit of a misplay from Mishi. Uh, but Amishria does still have this rockin' economy, man. She's got access to the fourth base. Which Mishi does simply not have. As many times I've said, Mishi does not have access to a third base, and he got one anyways. He definitely doesn't have access to a fourth base, because there is not an eighth Chris Mill on this map. Dude, this game is still a thing! We are 12 minutes into this match. Mishi just trying to get in any way he can. Deal damage here or there to the barbed wire. Chameleons, lizards, all kinds of stuff. Just trying to poke and prod in. Managed to get himself out on the map. Managed to get that third base, which was quite an impressive feat just there. But now he's looking to end this game. Thinking that chameleons are the way to do it.
Nisha sure is starting to increase that Falcon number, though. I think that's the right move. Only nine squirrels here in the turrets, really, to shoot up, but Amisha is going to take the fight under the turrets, or over the turrets, I should say. I would not advise that. Those turrets actually knock down those Falcons very, very quickly. Dude, how many, how many units have died right here? How many animal ghosts are just floating around? We need to toggle, toggle ghost vision, man. And just have like a, a silhouette standing there of the unit for every unit that's died. That'd be crazy. I bet somebody could mod that. To ghost mode. I don't even know what to say anymore, you guys. This game is crazy. It's just constant struggle. For position here. Whoever breaks through here, I and mean, Mishi's breaking broken through a couple times, but Mishi's had enough to push him back. And the game really can't even go on much longer, to be honest. The economies are gonna start running out here. As the final bases for both players are starting to run dry. Now Amishri very smartly did keep that starvation farm open. And what she's gonna do with that is kind of wait until she's starving, right? And then open you know. Uh, build that farm there and get an extra five minutes on her timer essentially Dude this board this board hasn't died right like this is the same board the entire game That flock of Falcons is getting bigger and bigger from a Mistra here though I think I'd like to see here try to run around and attack from a different angle Without these turrets here, I mean, I guess you could argue she'd leave herself open here for Mishi to push in, but I still think she'd be taking a, a better engagement. But she wants to try to bait Mishi to, to walk forward chasing her and, and get out of this turret fire. Mishi's economy starting to tank, though. He's only got two farms left. These campfires have been mined out for quite some time. Dude, how much barbed wire has been built this game? This is insane. Amishri is actually using a ton of barbed wire effective against one of the best players in Tooth and Tail, Amishi. So much food spent on wire, dude. I know, but it's working. Amishi is starving now, and he's got no options. He has to move out. He doesn't have anything he can even he can stop the starvation timer with. He'd have to bust through here, take this grist mill and build on this tiny little farm just to stay in the game. He's got to move right here right now, but Amishri has just got enough to prolong this engagement. It's kind of been a stalemate right here, but that stalemate is a favorable position for Amishri with access to more bases. Starves Mishi out and takes the match. Boom. Amishri wins. Very nice. Oh whoops! I have two. I have two number eights, you guys. We'll go into match number eight point five. Doggo versus dinosaur are the betting options here. So pick your poison. The betting is going to open right. Meow. Betting is open for Doggo first Red Dino. Either bet Doggo or bet Dinosaur. Let's hop into it, guys. Match and break. Spawning at the bottom, we've got the red dinosaur and his opponent up top, Doggo. All right, we see pretty similar deck compositions here. Both players running uh, Squirrel Fox turret. Um, I like Red Dino's approach uh, a little bit more. I feel like ferrets really synergize well with the Fox turret style, uh, but Doggo's deck is certainly nice as well. It's always nice having those skunks in there and lizards and such, so. Overall, I'm excited for this game. Like, 
These decks are 50% the same, right? But that other 50% actually adds a lot of flavor and variety to this, as they're entirely different picks. And Red Dino is opening up with two moles, and Doggo is none the wiser, and he's not even home. This is so painful, man. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, Red Dino is going to go for the Warrens. I guess maybe he wants to prolong this mole aggression. He's going to get one farm, but he's going to lose a mole for it. I feel like he probably could have got a mole and kept both... I'm sorry, got a farm and kept both moles alive if he didn't go for the Warrens. But he got some damage done uh, to those Warrens for sure. Uh, Doggo didn't get a full refund, I don't think, so... Nice little bit of early game shenaniganery. Uh, and Red Dino's gonna follow this up with a five farm double, man. He is not messing around. He throws down a turret to try to stay safe against the counter attack, which is coming in the form of lizards, which is exactly what Doggo wants. Doggo's getting some damage on the mole, goes down, the turret's gonna go down. And these lizards are starting to get to work on this Warren. Doggo pulls back from now, careful to overextend, but I think he had the momentum there, to be honest, with the reinforcing lizards. I think he could have kept that up, but no, makes it the safer, arguably smarter play and says, you know what, I got some damage in here. Uh, you know, his economy is, he is ahead because Red Dino is still not on eight farms. I mean, this is an, an enormous commitment. But Red Dino's banking on catching Doggo a little bit with his pants down here with Squirrel Toad versus Straight Lizard. But, you know, Doggo's definitely ahead in this game, I feel like. His, his eight farm economy got up and running pretty quickly, even with, with that mole harassment. Uh, he pretty he f traded very favorably. He killed both those moles. He killed that turret. I don't think he even lost a lizard, really. Maybe one. But this is it, man. Doggo's got the toads. He's got the squirrels. He wants to move out and get something done right now. He's got to get something done. He doesn't have to kill Doggo, but he needs to get some damage in. Ooh, nice control. Oh, nice control there. Doggo kind of baiting out that first Toad hit, and then Red Dino hoping that Toad would blow up on the Warrens and get some damage done as well, but, you know, I, I think Doggo held that just fine. Red Dino is not down and out, but he is behind. And look at this. This is exactly what I love to see with Squizzard versus Squirrel Toad. You know, you open Lizard Heavy, which is fun to do. You know, try to get some damage done. Um, maybe punish your opponent for, for being too greedy with an opening. Or, you know, maybe they're slightly out of position or scouting out in the map or something. Look at this. Doggo rushing right up to that fox. Gonna get scouted immediately by Red Dino. Yep, there it is. So he knows what's happening. And Red Dino doesn't have a... Oh, my God. Red Dino. Oh, man. Oh, my God. This is so This is so good. This is so good, you guys. Let's just have a moment of silence here for this fox. Beautiful play here from Red Dino. He's going to try to pick up uh, a farm, but realizes the lizards are probably on the way, the reinforcements are on the way, sells off those moles for whatever he could get, denies that fox, deals 180 food worth of damage, and he's got to be expecting this counter-aggression. Now, Doggo teched all the way out of the lizards, which I think you should still keep three lizards when you see toads from your opponent, uh, if I was going to be hypercritical. I mean, it's just my opinion. I could totally be wrong, but... Because you still don't want these toads to uh, get nice connections on the squirrels, right? You, you'd rather trade three lizards for their three toads or something along those lines or maybe even just one or two toads and your squirrels pick off the other one. I hear a cat in the background. Yeah, she wants to go outside, man. So I, I have two cats. Um, my first cat, I got Cataphract. Oh, hang on. Hold that thought. Hold that thought, you guys. Red Dino is moving out here on the map. Everyone's like, no, Deltheus, tell us about your cats. <laughs> denies that. Denies that campfire. Gonna move in. That ferret goes down immediately, but that toad connection was absolutely phenomenal here for Red Dinosaur. He feels confident enough to even fight underneath these turrets. It's the right call as he continues to push forward. That skunk, though, is gonna be enough to make Red Dino back up, at least for now. 
yeah, so I have two cats. The first cat I got, I was living in a trailer, uh, you know, putting myself through college and stuff, and this cat lived outside. It was a stray cat, and then, you know, it was really nice to us and sweetheart. And we started feeding her, and that was the end of it. <laughs> it's basically your cat now, right? So we started giving her some food outside. She was really cool. She'd bring me dead lizards and snakes and moles and stuff. Um, and then we moved out of that trailer into a townhouse and we were just like, should we take the cat with? I mean, it was so obvious that it was an abandoned house cat. It was kind of sad. And we were kind of, you know, we were like, oh, I wonder if it's just somebody's outside cat, but no, it, it was like outside during hurricanes and stuff, like hiding underneath our cars. It was definitely, definitely a stray cat. So we took Cataphract in and she is the most lovey-dovey cat in the world, dude. Like, it is insane like, how much that cat just wants to cuddle with you. Uh, really big sweetheart, and um, we decided we have one cat, might as well get another. Casey's, my wife's dad's cat had a, had kittens, so we took one of the kittens in. But, see, Cataphract's from the streets, man. She knows what it's like outside, so she wants nothing to do with that being outside. But Smokey, the one we got as a kitten, um, really wants to go outside, so she'll sit there and meow by the patio. I let her outside, too, uh, supervised. I'll just let her run around a little bit, you know, while I'm out on the back porch. I don't let her just run around outside unsupervised, though, because I live in an urban area in an apartment complex. Ooh, nice turret positioning here from Red Dinosaur. Lots of skunks, but these turrets are phenomenal. Doggo's going to try to take the engagement anyways. Going to be forced to back up. He's lost one skunk already. He almost loses another. Cats hard counter snakes, lizards, and moles. They do, man. Dude, I was impressed one time. I saw this, like, I mean, I live in Florida, so seeing a snake's, you know, pretty common place. But I saw this, I was, like, coming home from class one day, and I pull up, and there's this big snake in my yard, so I just stop for a minute, you know. And I'm just like, oh, crap, there's a snake there. And then I look closer, and the snake had its head cut off, dude. And I was like, cataphract. Are you insane? Like, dude, she decapitated that snake, man. Nuts. Cats are vicious, dude. Cats are killers. Cats just kill for fun, man. I've said it before, but what's crazy too is like house cats are the same. They have like the same brain and instincts and stuff as like larger cats that they didn't really split in evolution like dogs and wolves did. Um, so you know they they kind of have a lot of the same same instincts and stuff. And as long as a house cat is not out of shape. You could basically just throw it out in the woods and it would survive. Like, it still knows how to hunt and stuff. Not saying that you should, but... Alright, man. Doggo's trying to get his fox, but Red Dino's already got the fox here. And Doggo does have some nice fox defense in the form of turrets, in the form of lizards. But again, the toads against the lizards. But still, man, nine toads is a lot, dude. You know, Doggo could make three to six lizards. And, and try to, you know, trade into those toads in a way that's effective for himself. But he decides against it, and four ferrets here just raining down so much harassment. <laughs> Master still says his mom's cat also decapitated one of them. Yeah, dude. Foxes are so adorable. I've never seen a fox in real life, I don't think. Maybe I have. I'd have to actually think about that, but I don't think so. I might have saw... I, I, I might have saw... <laughs> you guys, my southern accent almost came out. I was trying to say I might have saw... I might have saw one of them foxes I was up in Colorado. And speaking of foxes, Red Dino's got his on the board. He's looking to make the moves. Doggo really doesn't have an answer to this. He's trying to pull back, but just such... A poking heavy army here from Red Dino. Really interesting composition with the four ferrets, the fox, and a lot of toads. You know, the toads are just like, all right, man, if you're going to try to hard engage into this, you know, my toads are going to slam into you. And if you don't hard engage, then you're just going to get picked apart by all my poke here. Nice control by Red Dino, too, trying to be very careful not to waste these toads on buildings. But the fox is out here for Doggo. 
And Red Dino hard engages as Toads get great connections and moves in. Red Dino even trying to go up to a second Fox uh, to be able to one-shot uh, certain units like a lot of the Tier 2 and, and other Foxes. Doggo's still alive, but I don't know for how much longer. He's got a nice economy here, but he took a lot of damage, and Red Dino gets the kill on the Fox. Doggo taps out on the back of that. Red Dino takes the match. So, Red Dino winning the match. Boom. All right, guys. Game number nine will be underway momentarily. Your betting commands are going to be Gentleman and Pimpintosh. So get your wolf coins out of your fanny pack. Get ready to throw them down here as we're about to hop into match number 9 or match number 10. I don't know, man. Who's really keeping track? We're just throwing around wolf coin, watching some carnage. Man, I did not do that at right at all. I am useless without p -boop. Okay. Okay, that looks correct. All right, gentlemen versus Pimpintosh. The betting begins now. Boom. Boom, boom. Let's hop into it, guys. The bet is open. All right, spawning on the left, we've got Big Pimpintosh and his opponent to the right, the gentleman. This is a good one for betting because, like, both people submit a lot, right? And we see wins and we see losses from both players. So you never really know who submitted this. And even if they did submit it, you don't know uh, if they won or lost. So... Fox here for Tosh, and Gentleman with a lot of tier 1, even going to open the game up with a 4 farm mole. Now Tosh uh, did get the scout off, should have seen no queued farm, means shenanigans are underway, and responds to this very nicely with the turret. The mole's going to come in, turret gets sold off, building farm gets sold off, another turret begins. And very nicely done by Tosh, knocks out a mole from Gentleman, and Gentleman's just going to sell the other one there, so... Nice victory, oh, but okay, he's about to fake him out, it, it looked like. But no, the gentleman keeping this mole aggression up. This is old school DJ Soak style here. Now, gentleman does get some value out of these turrets. Knocks a couple of them out. Uh, those moles are getting low, but yeah, he realized that's not going to work. Sells them off. Looks like he... No, I keep thinking that he's just going to back up and go home, but not this game, man. The gentleman coming hard and heavy here. <clears throat> Ooh. Nice opening here for Tosh. He, he gets a lot of value. Built some Toads. I guess Toads would do pretty good at knocking down moles very quickly, just not very cost effectively. Um, but the gentleman gets home, gets his economy going. Uh, but still, Tosh is in a nice spot. I, I'm a little worried that Tosh didn't. Throw down his 8th farm just yet. Uh, needs to be careful about that. Doesn't want to fall too far behind. But I think he just wants to put on some aggression with the squirrels here. He doesn't want to uh, block the production rate of these things. Ooh, and Gentleman still hasn't thrown down a war. And I think the Gentleman is just going to try to alley-oop him here. And throw down a bunch of moles again. And sure enough, here we go. Mole again. Gentleman playing dirty, man. He's digging deep for his strategies. Come on, that one was good. He's digging deep. Get it? You get it, you guys? I'm tired. Leave me alone. Oh, I don't know if just a few moles can take out the base, but the gentleman knows better than I do. It's getting close, and it's close, but it's gonna live. The gentleman, oh! Gentleman still doesn't have any warrants. <laughs> he taps out. Big Pivotosh takes the match. <laughs> uh. 
Uh, that was a fun game. Oh wow, betting was uh, even there. So Tosh wins that one, Kabuski. All right. Where are we at? Okay, we got some bonkage coming up. So it's gonna be Bonk versus Sean for the betting. If you would like to throw down some wolf coins, have a little bit of fun. All right. Betting is open now for Bonk vs. Sean, match number 10. Oh, we got some Bonk bets coming in. You never know with the Bonkaroni. All right, spawning on the left, we've got Sean Roberts, 189. And his opponent to the right, Bonk. Okay, okay, okay. So Bonk's got the Fox. Sean has just got a lot of defense. He's got the board though. So, I mean, Bonk's deck looks looks pretty cool. You know, it, it, it's fine. Sean's Roberts is a, is a bit more uh, non-conventional, but it could still work. So we'll have to see how these guys want to take the match. Bonk opened up with a five farm war and is he gonna go for a double? Nope. Just a five farm safe warren. No big deal. Just taking it easy, man. Relaxing on this desert map. It's gotta be hot. So both players do have access to second and third bases here. So not a lot to say thus far in the game. Uh, both players should be eventually getting up to 8 farm, 2 tier 1 warring, something around there. The, 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 the way that the warrants have been placed here is, is slightly different than normal. Bonk looking to get aggressive though, moving across the map with just a couple squirrels. Need to be careful. These lizards could tear him up in a, in a direct engagement. Bonk moving in! Yeah, and these lizards are going to trade very nicely against the squirrels. Bonk is going to have to go home with his tail between his legs for the time being. He's got a lot of money though, he could throw down that Fox Warren. Nah, just some pigeons for now. Probably grab these other farms. Definitely needs to be done. And Sean's gonna go ahead and grab that 8th farm as well. Uh, so nothing crazy yet, just some tier 1, a little bit of poking and prodding. But Sean's only got lizards here. Bonk doesn't have the toads, so he's not, he's not directly countered or anything like that. But hey, it... We saw in, in a previous match with, I think it was Blue Coon, right? Where he, he played very well with just Lizards against Toads, man. So it can be done. It can be done. Maybe Bonk went AFK. Maybe Pizza just got there. Man, I'm hungry. I think I'm going to go get some boiled peanuts after this. I'm not going to lie. Throw down that Fox Warren. Ah, oh, throws, throws down the skunk. He decides. Campfire coming up here for Sean. Oh, he might be waiting for this to get done so he can start building some defense here. He's gonna grab that grist mill as well as Bonk is, so. Going into about a, a little bit of middle mid game here, gentleman's agreement style. No no harm, no foul. Nobody's being too greedy, right? Oh yeah, there it is. There's the boar man. That boar could be deadly. If Bonk doesn't scout it and respond with his own tier 3 or maybe try to push in before that boar gets done, we've been seeing a lot of success with the boar these past couple episodes. <laughs> Dell's brain, lots of money equals Fox Warren. <laughs> You're not wrong. And here we go, Sean Roberts is moving in, he gets the Skunk Warren. The skunk stands strong though, and the lizards get cleaned up. Is this gonna trigger a counterattack from Bonk? No, it looks like he just wants to get some more skunks going, maybe throw down another farm or two. Perhaps get some more tier one. Take it easy for now. But that attack from Sean was was unfortunate for him, man, because he just lost all those lizards, right? So that's a lot of money he had to spend refinancing that. And then right around the same time, the boar gets done, and I was, yeah, I was like, I wonder if he's just going to sell that. I don't think he should. I, I think I would rather see him sell off maybe the Falcon Warren uh, to try to get that boar going ASAP. A bonk, man. 
Bonk's not wasting any time. He's ready to rock and roll. He's moving out. And so far, a nice engagement for Bonk. The Skunk Ass getting a lot done, but this Falcon in the sky and Sean Roberts with some target fire is going to clean things up. Oh, this boar is just still not paid for, my man. Got to get that boar going. But Sean's economy is getting pretty powerful here. I'm getting a little worried for Bonk as this game progresses. Now, Bonk's not totally slacking on his own economy. I almost did it again. He was like, he's floating almost 180 food. Is it going to be that fox? That's what I'd like to see. All right, all right. Not a whole lot to say here. I might fast forward it a little bit. It, it is starting to get late, ladies and gentlemen. Mayhaps I'll just do one more replay. I don't know. I guess I could stick it out and do the last two. I should have only one less replay left, but I I screwed up and, and forced myself into extra work <laughs> by having two number eights. Bonk takes an engagement. Uh, but Sean Roberts has the better target fire here, but Bonk just has the better numbers from the look of it. Moving forward. Starting to get some damage on this. Chris Mill is getting low. Chris Mill goes down, but Sean Roberts doesn't even care about that Chris Mill, man. The real base is the one behind it. And Bonk should know about it. No, Bonk actually hasn't scouted in quite some time, so he's not aware of the economy of his opponent. And the boar is almost here. But Bonk is very far ahead. After taking some great engagements. Alright, the boar is coming. I might fast forward a little bit, you guys, to these next couple of replays. Just to, just to get everything in. And let Dell get some sleep, too. I'm totally going to go get some boiled peanuts after this game, though. I'm not lying. I'm going to bring my wife some. She's going to be so happy. All right, Sean Roberts moving in, but I don't think the boar is going to be enough. Nice explosion. But Bonk's army is simply too strong. Cleans everything up, and now I think Bonk is in a great spot to win this match. A lot of money invested in turrets here from Sean, which are not going to keep him safe against the ferrets of Bonk. Boncaroni's even got that other base up top. Here we come. The siege is going to begin. Sean tries to pounce in on this. Oh, gets the skunk. But that's going to be it. The rest of his army goes down. Bonk is just chilling, man. Death from afar with these ferrets here. Death, death from a thousand cannonballs. Honey roasted boiled peanuts? I don't think I've ever heard of honey roasted boiled peanuts. It's all about the Cajun ones, man. I mean, I'd try it. I like like honey roasted regular peanuts. I don't know if you even could honey roast a boiled peanut, right? You probably just thought I meant regular peanuts. I mean, I guess why not? You just throw a bunch of honey in there with it. It'd probably work. Bonk! He's moving in! He's taking it slow, but he's making it happen. And Sean's gonna come in for another engagement. These lizards typically fare well against the army composition that Bonk has, but he just doesn't have the numbers. The fox is on the way as well for Bonk. The artillery cannon's gonna get denied. Are we even going to see the Foxes game? I don't think so. As Sean taps out, Bonk takes the match. Doof. Bonk is the wiener. Okay. We've got two more, you guys. Get ready to bet. The betting for Pingu vs. Parsival is about to begin right now. 
Boom. The wolf coin bet is open for Pingu versus Parzival. And with it, with that, let's hop into match number eleven. If you are gonna bet, bet fast, man. The bet does not stay open for very long. Only one minute. In the bottom, we've got Parzival. And his opponent too left, Pingu. Okay, Wolf and Owl this game as a tier three. Look at Pingu with his nice double high ground castle style here. The lowly peasant Parzival out in the fields. Gonna try to rain some chaos upon him. Expansions do look better for Pingu. Um, Parzival can try to take this second base, but he might be forced to come over here to the side of the map if the game progresses on too long. However, these aren't the easiest expansions for Pingu either. Pingu would really have to control this whole area here uh, to gain access to these because, you know, for him to go from this base to this base, I mean, it's quite a hike. You have to run all the way around like so. Okay, okay. So, eight farm openings from both players. Tier one, beginning to get thrown down. Does Pingu go straight to the tier two? No, he's just gonna do the two tier one. Nothing crazy thus far. A little bit of fast forwarding as the game progresses. Because it is normally the time where I stop the stream, but I'm gonna try to get to the last of these. I know the new patch is pending. We've been, it's been pending for a little while though, but to be fair, Andy's been very busy. Uh, as of late. I'm not complaining though because I have a nice healthy stock of replays. Tier 2 choice for Pingu is going to be that ferret. So this is a fun opening. I like to open like this uh, the way Pingu is. Um, you know a skunk opening is definitely stronger on paper but ferrets can be a lot of fun. You can get a lot of value out of them if, if played correctly. And I do feel like Squirrel Ferret can go up against Squirrel Skunk. Uh, just depends on depends on some variables. You know, you want to be, yeah, exactly like Pingu's doing here. You need to get some free shots off with this Ferret. You know, get a couple kills. Uh, but Parsifal is going right in here. He took a Falcon very late, so he's got a little, a few extra squirrels. But Pingu's moving up to contest. Both players doing a nice job with their target fire. This toad! Oh, I thought that toad was going to make it through. It ends up getting gunned down. And overall, fairly even tier 1 trade. But tier 2 staying alive for Pingu uh, is what he's, he should be pretty happy about there. Oh, I guess Pingu. Well, yeah, looking at the army graphs. I mean, Pingu came out a little bit on top, but nothing, nothing crazy. Parsifal's been doing a really good job uh, preventing these toes from going down, uh, from from uh, from detonating rather. I don't think we've seen a single toe connection yet, right? And how many toads have died? Like four or five? Ooh, Biohazard going all in on Parsifal here, man. All right, second bases are going down for both players as Parsifal is moving in, gonna try to get something done. These Toads are starting to get the connections. Only one of them goes down though. Again, nice t focus fire from Parsifal onto those Toads. But Pingu's army is just too strong and pushes Parsifal back for the time being. This is starting to become a lot of damage here. Denies that base. Now Parsifal does have the campfire. Uh, Pingu did take a gristmill over to the top right, but hasn't invested anything on it yet. So right now that's just 60 food, not doing anything. However, Parsifal, uh, Pingu's just got so much tier one here. <clears throat> the Toads getting the damage they need in these last couple engagements. And now Parsifal's just trickling in, man. Pingu might have the momentum here to just end the game. Sure enough, he does. Pingu takes the match. It's unfortunate for Biohazard.
Boom. Pingu. Pingu is a wiener. <laughs> All right, Marx is winning big on that that uh that pingu bet. Very nice. All right, guys, last match of the night. Last opportunity to join in on the betting here. It's gonna be Saga versus Protocam. All right. You only got one minute to bet, so if you are going to bet, be quick. And the betting is opening now. Let's hop into it. Match number 12. All right, spawning on the left, we've got Protocam. And his opponent to the right, Saga. All right, Saga rocking the Fox and Protocam going heavy tier two, no tier three, but has the barbed wire, so. He's got Mole as well, gotta keep an eye on him. You never know what these, these Mole players are gonna do. He, he did open five farms, so Saga's not gonna be immediately alarmed about the possibility of the Mole, because he's gonna see the fit, you know, five farm being thrown down. Um, but I don't know, yeah, seeing the commander right there might make you uh, a bit curious. Does spot the Mole, should be able to, uh, you know, throw down a, a turret here and, and be all right. Yeah, pretty nicely defended here. But Protogam did throw down a farm in the middle of this. Like, he started building the mole, went back to throw down farms. Um, so, you know, he delays the, the, the economy a bit of Saga, forces out the turret. He got the 20 food off the turret, so a little ins and outs here. Both players are going to wind up in about the same position. This protocam is going to keep that mole alive long enough for it to heal up to full HP uh, so we can get that full refund. And the very greedy campfire coming out here from Saga, uh, even before he plants tier 1 warrants, uh, it Especially greedy when you know your opponent's got moles. Uh, as Protocam's gonna move in here to try to punish this uh, before the squirrels can get up for Saga. This campfire definitely gonna go down. Moles annihilate buildings very quickly. Nicely done there from Protocam. He needs to go home and spend that money, honey. Decides on Falcon Chameleon, gonna go really hard up onto this tier two. And uh, nice little, nice little victory there from Protocam, uh, utilizing these moles in the early game very well. All right, Saga man retakes that campfire, floating a little bit of money, trying to decide what he wants to do next. Goes with the Falcons, changes his mind, goes with Falcons again, in a, in a better position for the tier two Warren. This map definitely looks better for Protocam, but it is such a small map. I don't know if this game is really going to go that long. And Saga does have access to a nice second base uh, that he can take relatively easily. But even still, this high ground is always a pain to fight up. Alright man, Protocam. Looking to put on some pressure here, getting into position, taking this grist mill, trying to expand his territory out. Allow the opportunity to build some barbed wire, perhaps. Who needs to be careful of this commander? Definitely doesn't want to lose it right at the beginning of the fight. Protocam is pushing in here with the chameleons. That gristmill doing a good job tanking. Saga not really target firing a whole lot in that engagement. Protocam is going to move in, loses a chameleon, but gets a falcon. Protocam might just have too much damage here. I don't know if Saga is going to be able to muster up enough to hold. That Falcon is making a big difference at the moment. And that Falcon, with some good positioning, is going to push Protocam back for the time being. But Protocam's got territory right here. He's going to get that Falcon. Oh, man. Does he? Oh, my God. That Falcon lives. That Falcon's going to get a tattoo about that experience. He's got some stories to tell, man. Somebody buy that Falcon a beer. 
The falcon's still alive! Dude, now I'm like invested in this falcon. I really hope it lives. Oh my god, it's still alive, you guys. It's at 5 HP. It's at 6 HP. It, it's okay. It's okay. 8 HP. Like, Proto Cam is, is really doing great in this game. But I don't know why, I'm just really concerned about this Falcon. It gets back to full HP, so it could be alright. But Protocam's moving in for the killing blow. He's not going to immediately knock Protocam out, or Saga out, however, as he's got another Gristmill, he's got another Campfire. I'm just going to assume that's my buddy Falcon, right? Not the other one that died. This, this, no, 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 no. Oh. Well, he had a good run. And Protocam has pierced his opponent. Going to take the match. I'm gonna give you all the them wolf coins. All right, everybody, that is it for the show. I appreciate everybody tuning in, man. Play some tooth and tail over the weekend. Get some juicy replays to send me, and that is gonna be it. Maybe I'll stream over the weekend if I have a chance. I don't know. I don't think my weekend's super clustered this weekend uh this time around i think i got some time maybe during sunday or something uh, let's go say hi to my wife you guys i think she's building a lego set or something i don't know that's it man thanks for tuning in everybody i always appreciate it let's go raider get yourself a big pizza oh man pizza sounds so good let, let us go raid my wife let her know I'm going to get her boiled peanuts, so it'll really hype her up. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. It was a lot of fun. Go derp around with my wife for a little while. And I will see y'all next week. <laughs>